Hello everybody and welcome to the second lesson on the organization of the human body. To complete this lesson you're going to need a book, you're going to need a pen and we're going to need some worksheets as well which you can download for free in the description below. In your books I'd like to get down today's title which is the skeleton. For your starter activity I'd like to put these five objects in order of size. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need a bit longer pause the video and when you finish we'll go through it together. Okay, you're all done. So putting these objects in order of size from smallest to biggest. The smallest unit of a living organism is the cell. A collection of cells is a tissue. A collection of tissues is an organ. A collection of organs is an organ system. And then a collection of organ systems is an organism, the whole living entity. In this lesson, we're going to be labeling the main bones of the skeleton. We're going to state the four functions of it. We're going to link the structure of the bone marrow to its function. And there's a bit of homework as well, which we'll talk about at the end. There are 206 bones in the adult human body, and we need them to support the rest of our tissues. And without the skeleton, we'd simply just be a blob, unable to move. For our next task, what I'd like us to do is to label all the bones of the skeleton on the worksheet. If you're unsure about any of the bones, then use the hints on the worksheet to work out where the bones are located. I've got five seconds on the clock. Pause your video, and then when you finish, we'll go through it together. Okay, are we all finished? Starting from the top, you've got your skull. A little bit further down, you've got your collarbone, and then you've got your ribs. At the very top of the arm, you've got your humerus, and you've got your spine running down the center, and then your pelvis. We've got two bones in the forearm. We've got the ulna and the radius. If you hold out your hand with your palm facing forward, then the bone on the same side as your thumb is your radius, and the other side is your ulna. You've then got your femur, which is the big bone in the leg, and then you've got your patella, which is another name for the kneecap. You've then got the tibia, which is the shin, so that's at the front, and your fibula, which is at the back. So we've labelled the main bones of the skeleton now, so we can check that off of our list. So now we need to look at the functions of the skeleton. The skeleton gives the human body support, and it gives it its shape, and it allows us to stand. It also offers us protection. The skull protects the brain, the ribs protect the heart and the lungs. It also allows us to move because your muscles are attached to your bones and they pull the skeleton, resulting in movement. And they also, at least some of it, makes new blood cells. So the spine, the pelvis, the ribs, the femur and the tibia all make new blood cells. The femur and the tibia, however, stop making blood cells later on in life. For your next task, what I'd like to do is match up the function of the skeleton to a description of that function. If you need a bit more of a challenge, I'd also like to explain why your ribs need to move when you breathe in. We've got five seconds on the clock. Pause your video if you need more time, and then we'll go through it together. All right, are we all finished? So an example of protection is that the ribs prevent damage to the heart and the lungs. Support keeps the body upright, Movement, the skeleton, is pulled by the muscles and making blood cells, the pelvis, the ribs and the spine create new blood cells throughout your whole life. This challenge question, if you can explain why your ribs need to move when you breathe in, then I'd like to put that down in the comments below. We've stated the four functions of the skeleton, so we can check that off our list. Next, we need to link the structure of the bone marrow to its function. Bone marrow contains stem cells, and stem cells have the potential to become any blood cell. A red blood cell to carry oxygen, a white blood cell to destroy pathogens, or platelets which help to clot wounds. We've got a graph here, and there's quite a bit going on in this graph. We've got the prenatal section, and we've got the postnatal section. This prenatal section is how the red blood cells are made before you are born, and this postnatal is after the baby has been delivered. The different coloured lines represent where those blood cells are being made. So this dark orange line, that's the yolk sac. This green line is the liver. And using the key on the right, you can see all the other organs which are responsible for making blood cells. For your next task, what I'd like to do is use this graph to describe the production of red blood cells from birth. And if you need a challenge, I'd also like to suggest why the blood cells are not always made in the bone marrow before you are born. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. And then if you need more time, pause the video and then we'll go through it together. Okay, are we all finished? 
So this question focuses on the production of red blood cells from birth. So we're only interested in this postnatal section of the graph. We're not interested in this bit here. We're not interested in the prenatal section. It is from birth. So four things we need to state in order to get these four marks. The spine, the pelvis and ribs create blood cells throughout your whole life. The tibia and femur only create blood cells in early life. And you can see that here with that purple and this blue line. The spine and the pelvis make the most blood cells. That's why the lines are higher than all the others. And the tibia makes the least blood cells. All right, so now we've linked the structure of bone marrow to its function. You can see that there's a homework down here and that homework is available for download for free in the links below. All right, so we've got one more thing we need to do before we wrap this lesson up. And you can choose which plenary task you do. You can either write a paragraph summarizing today's lesson using as many keywords as possible. Or you could suggest what would happen to the amount of blood that you produce if you broke your leg. Answers in the comments below. I hope you had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.